Hello and welcome to a quick look at some of the enhancements to lighting in Armour 3. Coarse lighting itself is quite a general topic, so what we'll do is pick out a few elements and identify some of our favourite improvements, kicking things off with the day-night cycle. Now, this alone isn't a new feature for the Armour series, but it is worth mentioning that the progression of time can completely change the complexion of a scenario and, definitely, it's a big part of the sandbox potential of our games. Something that is new, however, is the enhanced richness of the nighttime scenes. The improvement to the way the engine handles HDR has enabled us to overhaul the feeling of darkness in Armour 3. Vehicles particularly take on a whole new complexion, and the detailed ground surfaces really come into their own, casting this kind of light. Now, these chem lights are one of my favourite new features. They offer a splash of colour to the night, illuminating and tinting the objects around them, as you can see on the barrel of this weapon, as I move around using the new tactical pace, alluded to in an animations feature a few weeks back. So, if we take a look at the same scene, but now from a little further away, we can really begin to see the differences that the number of lights in the scene can make. The flashing lights there are from a chopper, and the sweeping beam is its searchlight. Moving further out still, we're able to keep the whole structure of the airbase in the scene, which, you might imagine, is great for navigation, or indeed, acquiring targets. In our Stratus showcase, we saw a glimpse of the new muzzle flashes. Now let's take a look again, this time using something with a little more punch. So, moving on, uh, yes, for those paying attention, we're not underwater quite yet, but what you're seeing here is a peek at some of the content we've prepared for the presentations at this year's E3. If we hop across to our Elite Tier 1 Operator, we'll jump into our Diving Showcase. This section demonstrates a number of new features, but of course here we're most interested in the lighting. Looking past the fish and through the surface, we can see the clouds and the underwater shading effects on the surface of rocks, seabed, etc. Things like these subtle particle effects zipping past and the seafloor clutter also really add to the overall impression of being underwater. Okay, skipping ahead a little, we can spot some of the underwater mines. A wreck, a blinkertree tuna fish, an SDV just to the left behind that rock, and of course some up for divers. So that just about wraps up what we've got time to show for you now. As always, thanks for joining us, and if you'd like to see the E3, we'll have much more information about that posted next week. Bye for now.